There are many differing opinions as to what's occurring neurologically in individuals with autism spectrum disorder. Researchers have shown a variety of things from differences in the volume of the brain to differences in pruning processes that may lead to under or over connectivity of certain neural networks. Further, researchers have shown differences in particular areas of the brain. For example, many researchers have shown differences in cerebellum in individuals with autism spectrum disorder. There's also an indication that cellular functioning may be different in some individuals with autism spectrum disorder, potentially suggesting subtypes of autism. In the neurodevelopmental approach, we are often looking at a mechanism called neuroplasticity in order to drive therapeutic changes. Neuroplasticity is this idea of using experience to change the brain, to make some networks stronger. Music is a wonderful way to drive neuroplasticity for many reasons. One is that it helps to engage individuals in different skills and different functions. So we can have an individual with an autism spectrum disorder being involved in different skill acquisition through music playing and music engagement that allows those pathways to be developed in the brain. Music also releases dopamine when we're involved in pleasurable music making activities. That release of dopamine has been shown to be tied to facilitating or driving neuroplasticity. And lastly, music helps with anticipation and repetition. Because music is so beautifully structured, we have many opportunities for individuals to practice skills and that re repeated practice can help with cementing those pathways in the brain. Researchers have shown that individuals with autism spectrum disorder perceive their environment differently. This includes differences in visual stimuli, auditory stimuli, and per perception of tactile stimuli. Those differences can lead to different behaviors in response to those, those stimuli. For example, someone might cover their ears with different auditory stimuli, they might be tactfully defensiveness or tactfully seeking, or they might have different reactions to visual stimuli. What music and music therapy can do is provide opportunities for grounding and regulation of the sensory system. Because music is so predictable and anticipatory, we can use music as a way to help individuals take in that sensory information, make sense of that sensory information neurologically, and then become much more regulated. That regulation can then help us to gain goal-based skills. So in a music therapy session from a neurodevelopmental perspective, we might do sensory regulation and then work on cognition and then sensory regulation and then work on communication. That way the child is at the optimal level for learning and for acquiring new goals.